hello hello i'm um, your most welcome uh i am your host uh low society uh it's me norman so uh we are testing to find out if we are okay via youtube and uh, all the other platforms that we are planned for uh thank you thank you for coming uh Yeah, thank you so much. Um Yeah, they can hear me. So I hope we can all hear from Zoom. Via Zoom here, yeah, I hope we are all it's edible and everything. Audible, I mean. Thank you. Uh, am I audible enough? I hope everybody can hear. You're very much welcome to the eminent speaker series. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Alan, um, you can take over. Uh, I see you are among the participants who are available. So please, I would love you to take over. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much. I would also love to add a voice to welcome everyone uh, who was actually able to link in uh, at an early stage to come and join us in this conversation. Um, as per the program that I actually have, uh, we are starting with arrival. I think that is actually done. And uh, from that, we are going to actually listen from the speaker of the Uganda Christian University Law Society. Uh, the speaker is going to give us opening remarks and um, lead us in an opening prayer. I do not believe, I do not know if uh, if uh, if the speaker is actually in the meeting already. If the speaker is not in, I am uh, going to appoint the president, uh, Law Society, to, to give us opening remarks and to lead us in an opening prayer, then the, the, the speaker can actually do, can, can, can do the closing part. So, uh, Madam President, to my wife, K. Elizabeth, the floor is yours. Uh, give us an introductory remarks and an opening prayer. You're welcome. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Alan Abinawe. I hope I can be heard. I am really honored to be part of this today. Today is our first session. Um, of our eminent speaker series. These are series that we are going to have every last Friday of every month. And today is our very first. And I am honored and ha happy that we are going to be having Dr. Daniel Roheza talking to us about a very, very pertinent issue in law school and even after. So thank you so much all who are here. And I urge us to please invite our friends as well, invite the people in our contacts to join because this is going to be very, very insightful. So let me pray as we start. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much because you are good. We thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you that finally, today is the first episode of this series, oh God. And we pray that this journey, oh God, shall be very smooth and very beneficial to your children. I ask that you will lead many to join through the link and that many shall be touched and many shall 
shall learn something new. May this session be fruitful. I pray for our speaker that you'll speak through him to our hearts, O God, and that the words that he shall say shall bear fruit in our lives, O God. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Alan. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for, for the opening remarks and a word of prayer. Um, I would like to thank everyone who has logged in for, for this session. Now, as Elizabeth has actually stated, this is an inaugural session of the eminent speaker series. The Law Society thought it fit that they should actually be having a um, speakership series at the end of the month where they would actually be inviting different speakers to speak about different topics uh, so as to enable uh, our students at Uganda Christian University to, to have and to pick from diversity. So we are honored and we are blessed that today's session, we, we actually, being an inaugural session, we are blessed to, to actually have a speaker who is an all-round lawyer. He has the required experience and has given his, uh, to our liking. Uh, you all know our speaker. Our speaker is Dr. Daniel Ruweza. I am going to take the honor to actually have to speak about him, the little that I know. Dr. Daniel Ruweza is a lecturer at uh, Makere University School of Law. Uh, he, he is a president emeritus of the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity. Uh, he's an author. Uh, of uh, a book. Uh, I believe that most of us are well acquainted with this book. Uh, it's titled, We Do Not Teach That at the University. And um, he's a, a political pundit, if I can put it. And he, he's, he's well versed uh, as far as the topic at hand is concerned. Uh, he's going to actually be speaking to us this afternoon or evening. I don't know what you can call it. Um, he's going to expose to us what is not taught in the classroom, and yet it is relevant in today's changing and competitive world. So allow me, without wasting uh, any more time, welcome Dr. Daniel Ruweza to preempt the discussion for us. Thank you very much um, for inviting me, first of all, and thank you, uh, Alan, for the introduction. It's always a pleasure to be part of uh, conversations um, that, first of all, involve young people like you and me, uh, but also to plan for, for the future and um, have conversations that are not normally held in certain spaces. Um, and therefore, today is one of those days which I've been looking forward to uh, because I know that um, I am who you are. You know, you are who I am. I am because we are. Uh, we are one small family, and when you succeed, I succeed. When I succeed, you also succeed. So I'm going to ask for just one minute, uh, whereby people will type into the chat room what their expectation is. Um, ah, I'd like to know what they are looking Speak for probably about 28 to 30 minutes or even less. And then uh, we can have a Q&A session. I'm hoping that some of you have by now been able to read the book. Uh, but even if you have not, you have been engaged in conversations relating to the book. So in just a minute uh, uh, or even less, kindly type for me what you hope to pick
from this uh, conversation, those of you who are able to type, so that I can have um, an idea of the things you are looking out for. Because as you know, the book is uh, the book covers quite a number of things. And there are things I want to speak about, but they may not be exactly what you want to um, uh, to, to to know. All right. Um, so the first is about uh, what? Why does it? What does it take to thrive uh, as a lawyer? What does it take to thrive as a lawyer outside um, uh, the law school? And and interestingly, someone asked me this. Uh, question and I told them read the book <laughs> read the book and um, yeah uh, we shall talk about this because this is the essence uh, of the book any other um, expectations from the members I'd like to hear uh, what you you're hoping to pick uh, from this conversation okay uh, Francis says I haven't got the chance to read the book but I've been engaged in a conversation I hope um what does it say i hope i hope to understand what the entire law is not only what we study but definitely what is outside the scope to note down a few things you are to mentor us in and i hope one day i'll get the book at hand all right personally i think you should address the question of ldc or the degree okay i wanted to say something about ldc what qualities must one possess outside what is taught yes exactly uh, what is taught outside the law yeah mm -hmm. any other um, views that people have that they would like to share please go ahead um, and let us know I haven't gotten a chance to read okay I'm all yours ready to listen in and take away all new info. Okay. So you've come as an open slate. That is Agnes. Okay. Um, yeah. Any, uh, any other people who would like to share what they would like to maybe further private practice, maybe further private practice and public practice. I'm not sure I've understood that. Okay. But um, we will find a way to, to work with each other. All right, all right. Two more, two more interventions, and then I'll begin. Chris Turinawe. Okay, what emerging opportunities exist in Ugandan legal practice today that one can consider specializing in? Okay, emerging opportunities. Okay, um, and then uh, someone says. Cyrus to now a battle of laws. I hope to learn from this webinar how to utilize different opportunities, especially those from the different webinars that we attend in light of taking a different approach from the conventional law practice of law firms. All right. What's the hard reality we should expect in legal practice? Okay. All right, hard reality. Based on the questions that um, I have received. And knowing that this is a forum that has been organized by um, the, the, the Uganda Christian University Law Society, um, I'll take it that the majority of you are law students, but I'm hoping that there may be amongst you some who are not necessarily law students and uh, who may want to benefit from this, or people who are in practice generally I've invited a few people to join into this conversation as well. Okay, so a little bit about me, um, I think should come in handy. Um, I'll start by saying that uh, I am really passionate about uh, students and young people. And if you've read my book, I say right in the blurb here that nation of Uganda by raising a generation of young people to achieve their fullest potential while honoring God, their families, and the nation. I know so many times we've been told that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. I would like to suggest, um, and indeed, 
I, I hold the view that the youth are the leaders of their generation. And, and this year has shown us with, um, with uh, the campaign by Bobby Wine that a young man can actually stand for the highest office in the land. So with that at the back of the mind, of, of your mind, uh, I will then commence by sharing a little bit of my story. Um, like many of us, I've been raised in a home. Uh, I was raised in a home that that um, that took me to school, but also took me uh, to Sunday school and to church. And while at church and at school, I started honing certain things which um, enabled me to begin saying the things that I say in this book. First of all, um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is knowing one's true north, knowing you have a compass and uh, direction in life is really guided by a compass. So you must know where is the north in order to find directions to where you are going. What is your true north? My true north is my belief system. I believe that one's worldview determines what they do. Your worldview must be clear to you. Um, you must have a true north. You must know what it is that you actually believe in. I'm a Christian, as some of you probably know, um, and being a Christian has influenced what I do, how I do it, what I say, and how I say it. I'm not a perfect human being. All I'm saying is that the Christ in me guides and directs the conversations I have and the things that I want to do. So my passion for people comes from that. And therefore, my passion to make a difference comes from the ability to know that I have certain core values in me that I believe in honesty, for example, uh, hard work, um, uh, being involving, um, being transparent, uh, among other things. So those value systems determine what you do and where you are going to go and they have a way in which they open spaces for you and then close other spaces uh, for you. Because for some people, when you hear that I'm a Christian, someone will just lock the door and not want to entertain me. When sometimes some of you hear that so-and-so is uh, of a certain belief or no belief, uh, it either opens doors for them or shuts doors uh, for them. So what is your true north what guides you you know um, there must be something that you believe in there must be something that guides you know so it, it also determines why you want to work and and what kind of work you want to do i remember uh one of my lecturers um, um and a successful lawyer in town mr philip karugaba once asked us in the law school, um, he said, how many of you came to do justice, to learn how to do justice uh, by coming to the law school? And I remember some of us put up our hands. And then he went ahead to explain to us what actually justice may mean or may not mean in practice. He narrated the story of a lawyer who had failed to file the right pleadings against a sugar company. And as a result, this sugar company truck that had crushed the lawyer's client's leg was able to use that excuse um, to say that your pleadings are not right and the case was actually kicked out of court. Now, depending on who the judicial officer is, um, they will determine whether they will stick to the letter of the law and not care whether this lady ever gets some kind of compensation or not, or they will go over and above to find a way to ensure that there's justice uh, for the lady. 
So what is your true north is a very important conversation. It affects why you chose to study the law. It affects what kind of business you do. It affects the people that you hang out with. It affects everything that you do. And it has been said that we are a sum total of the five people with whom we, we hang out. So look around you. The five people that you normally hang out around, that is the average. You are the average of those five people that you hang out around. Or in other ways, it says birds of the same feather flock together. So your true north determines everything that you do. At least it influences almost 100% the things that you do. What then is your true north? For those of you who are able to write, I would like you to write that down. Even before we go into any conversation, what is your true north? Secondly, one of the most critical conversations that I... The day he was born and the day he finds out why he was born. Two important conversations. The day you are born, you don't have much say about it, but you are here. And secondly, when you find out why you were born. In this chapter of the book, which comes in my very first chapter, I ask the question, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What is your vision, mission? What is your purpose? This is a conversation that all of us must have with ourselves. And this is where I share my story. Having been raised with uh, certain Christian values, I get into a secondary school at Busoga College Mwiri, a school I truly love because it did a couple of things for me. One, it nurtured my leadership ability. Two, it honed my, my, my Christian belief system. And three, it availed me the opportunity not just to lead, but also to grow as an individual. Because you see, in Busoga College Mwiri, whereas some people do thrive in groups, we were challenged without being told that we are leopards. And normally leopards, which is the logo or the, um, the, the yeah, you, you see it on, on, on our logo as, as we are. The, log, the, the leopard normally walks alone. Now that does not mean that I am fronting for people to move alone. I'm just saying that being a leopard gives you an opportunity to learn what your strengths are, what what your weaknesses are. Each one of you who is listening to me must have an opportunity to sit down with yourself and ask yourself that question. Who am I? Who am I? Why am I on the earth? Why was I born? What is my vision? A vision is a vivid imaginative conception or anticipation an aspirational description of what we would like to achieve or accomplish, either in the long term or in the mid term. What is your vision? What is the vision that you have um, as an individual? This conversation is normally a very uncomfortable conversation because it causes you to stop relying on your parents. I know some of you are studying law or any other subject because daddy said, Mummy said. But a time comes when you have to make a, a decision. Ask yourself, why am I studying the law? Why am I studying chemistry? Why am I studying biology? Why am I studying the things that I'm, do, I'm studying? Why am I hanging out with people? Why am I, why do I think that I am only complete 
when I'm driving in a, a powerful car, do I need people's approval in order to feel that I am who I am? Or can I survive on my own? Because a time comes in the life of a man, including a woman, when you will have to stand alone, either in the examination room or before an interview panel, or you are marooned off an island. However shielded you may be, a time comes when you must stand alone. Remember what is your true north. Remembering what your value system is, what your purpose is. And because of that, you then are able to make certain decisions. Justice Maranga, Chief Justice Emeritus of Kenya, got to a position in time when he had to make the unpopular decision of cancelling a Kenyan election. A rare feat in the whole world, not just in Africa. It had to take a man with a certain value system to be able to do so. There are so many people who have made critical decisions by standing for what they believe in. At the beginning of this month, we celebrated the Ugandan matters. These were young men who stood and said, I believe in something more powerful than what is earthly here. And I'll stand on that even if it means that my legs will be cut off and my body will be burnt. What is your mission? What is your purpose? This conversation is very critical because when you know your vision, mission, purpose, you then get to know what your strategies are. Remember, we've already talked about values. <clears throat> Many times we have said that most richest place because people have not had the conversation with themselves of knowing is there something greater in me is there something more powerful in me than just these tick box things that i do i personally chose to believe that there is more in me than just becoming a rich lawyer someone once said that some people are so poor all they have is money. Remember that. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. I personally believe that my riches should not only involve money, because money is a good thing. I mean, it is helping us to communicate right now. But it must go beyond. And I believe in you guys. You are my wealth. Because somewhere in this book, I talk about it. And I say, your network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth. I can arguably say that everything I am and everything I do is because of the wealth of my network. And I'm here right now speaking to you today because of the network. One of your, of your sponsors, Mr. Bernard Owundo, is a weary old boy. But he was also my student because I started my teaching career teaching and lecturing law at the Uganda Christian University. For, so, for those of you who don't know, I honed my lecturing skills from your university. At that time, the university didn't even have enough lecture rooms. So we used to teach on Sunday, Saturday morning under that big mango tree in the, in, in the compound. I hope it is not yet uh, removed. And I enjoyed my lectures there. But I developed powerful relationships with some of your, of your alumni now. Bernardo Wundo, Isaac Lubogo, and many others. And, that, and those have remained critical in the things that I do and the things that I say. I can never go um, without help. If I need any help, I can easily send out a message to any of my students. For example, if I have a legal question that I need assistance on, I can easily do that. Your network is your net worth. But going back to your value system, so when I got to Mwiri, a time came when people, when I had, when I stood for head prefect of that powerful school, 
and some people were asking um, you know they were asking me for my reaction because apparently or oh, allegedly my 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 the, the guy I was standing against was bad mouthing me uh, and I think it was a test and I said I am not going to respond to rumors or to negative speak if my colleague is saying that that is his strategy of campaign, I am not going to use abusive language against him. Today, he and I remain very good friends, and we associate on the Old Boys Forum uh, or fora uh, in the school. There are other value systems you must think about. When I left Mwiri and I went to, do, to study law, I became speaker of the Law Society. <clears throat> and one time we were faced with a situation where once again we are being accused of some things that we had not done by one of our own in the committee. And we had to have a meeting with the dean. Everyone cowed, I remember that day, everyone cowed from saying anything. And I spoke up, either because I was the speaker or because there are certain value systems in me to stand up for those who could not speak for themselves at that important time. What are your value systems? What is your vision and mission? I refuse to believe that I was raised to become a rich man, have a powerful big house, drive a big car, have a lot of money in the bank, beautiful children, and then I die content because they've studied from international schools. That is not my vision. That is not my mission. My vision is for a powerful nation called Uganda, gifted by nature, but whose citizens are also able to speak up and take responsibility. It bothers me when Ugandans refuse to adhere to standard operating procedures during COVID, not realizing the damage they are creating to their children and to their children's children. It bothers me that there's corruption in our nation. It bothers me that there's corruption um, in the justice law and order sector. When things go wrong, I am bothered. And my friend and, uh, and, 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 and pastor, Apostle Mose, normally says that when there is a problem, that is an opportunity for greatness. question to you is when there is an opportunity that is a question that we need to ask each other are opportunities presented as problems things that you find challenging places for you to blame others and point fingers at the government and to, to the leaders, or it's an opportunity for you to shine? That is a question I'd like to leave uh, for you. The third thing I'll speak about, because I cannot speak about everything here, is that the world is a VUCA world. A VUCA world. Someone asked me recently, what do we mean by VUCA? And I realized immediately they had not read my book. I talk about VUCA in this book. The world is volatile, it is uncertain, it is complex, and it's ambiguous. I repeat that. Volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Almost prophetically, when I released this book in 2019, just before lockdown, because I, 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 I launched it I had it published in December 2019, and because of lockdown, I couldn't do much about it. But almost prophetically, it's as though the Lord was speaking to me to say something, that there is a lot of uncertainty, there is a lot of complexity, there is a lot of ambiguity in the world. My question to you is, since the world is VUCA, how are you prepared how are you prepared for the world? How are you prepared for the world? It literally means that each and every 
thing that you think is stable and constant around you can easily change in the twink of an eye. We had planned to do a book launch and COVID-19 hit. We had, some people planned to get married, COVID-19 hit. Some people planned to start businesses or we are thriving very well in business, COVID-19 hits. I have dealt with students at Makere University and also at UCU. Students who have struggled academically and yet they had smooth sailing, uh, the way the Minister of Finance says, you know, you know, the academic careers were just shoo, and suddenly they come into the university and things just change. I've had conversations with people in, uh, in public spaces, non-lawyers, who have told me how the university is the worst place that they've ever been, how they failed terribly, how they could not manage, how they, how they, they feel traumatized just looking at the gates of Makerere. The world is a VUCA world. The world is a VUCA world. This book challenges us to be ready for anything that may happen in the world. Look at Nokia. Some of you may have Nokia phones or you have heard about Nokia phones. The Nokia phone at one time, Nokia was the leading cell phone producer. It was doing very well. It was making profits. Nothing could have gone wrong with the Nokia phone. But suddenly, the smartphone landed on the scene. Samsung and others took it up. The smartphone revolutionized technology, phone technology. So many companies went out of business. The ordinary camera is no longer necessary. The radio is no longer necessary. The photocopying machine is no longer necessary. So many things are no longer necessary. This phone has just an app called Scanner, CS Scanner. My kids have been doing online examinations or they, they sent us the papers and I was just scanning the papers and sending them to to, 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 to the examiner. I was doing the supervision, scanning the results and sending them to the examiners, just like that. Just like that. We literally don't need to meet because the phone has basically changed everything. The phone has basically changed everything, you know? So, Nokia ran out of business. Nokia ran out of business just because of that revolution. But I'm happy to note that Nokia is coming back because it has picked some of the skills. Of course, Samsung and, uh, and um, uh, Huawei and others have, have frog jumped, but with determination, it is possible. So the world is VUCA and we must be able to learn that. On page 12 in the book, I quote General Stanley McChrystal, who writes a book called Team of Teams. And he says that the world has changed drastically and in order to survive, there is need to constantly be aware and change with the times. Someone once said, the only constant thing is change. The only constant thing is change. Recently, my wife was saying that, what happened to me? She was asking me, it just, what happened to you? I married you when you didn't have a single gray beard. Your chin was smooth, but now I have a beard. I shave it. I have a beard now. Change continues to happen. Change continues to happen. You know? But Christo says that when they were sent, because General Christo was sent to fight the Al-Qaeda, and he realized that the fighting style of the Al-Qaeda is not like the fighting style of the Americans. The Americans were used to hierarchical leadership, that you have a leader at the, show, at the top who provides all answers for everyone, sends the command down, and everybody follows. But that was not so. 
when you killed one lead of the Al-Qaeda, three others popped up. It was like a hydra. And McChrystal quotes from Homer's Odyssey. Those who've done literature may probably remember Homer's Odyssey. In Homer's Odyssey, he narrates how the Greeks overcame the old man of the sea. Listen to this part. But the Greeks clung firmly. They are no more weapons of little use. With each shift, they shifted. With each new challenge, they changed, clenching their legs ar tight around the necks of animals that appeared, or digging their fingers into the wooden limbs of trees, or wrapping their arms around swirling balls of mercurial fire. The old man of the sea was defeated. By adapting, the Greeks found their way home. The point I'm making here is that the illiterate of this century, and I talk about the illiterate of this century in my chapter 5, the illiterate of this century is going to be that person who is unable to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Learn, unlearn, and relearn. A leader must always be on the path of improvement for himself and for others. A true leader must be ready to learn and unlearn when required. Learn, unlearn, relearn. Legal practice in Uganda and worldwide has changed. Before COVID, nobody knew that that the Law Development Center would ever teach via Zoom. Nobody knew it. Before you see you tried it, nobody knew that examinations could be conducted online. Of course, Makere has been having a long distance training program, um, but, but, but the, the, the move to have an online exam, especially in most Ugandan uh, universities, has not really picked up. But UCU is unlearning, it's relearning. In order for Bakereli and other universities to survive, we now have to think. Think tanks are very critical. How do you learn, unlearn, and relearn? Someone asked me, how do you survive outside the law school? I would like to ask you, how do you survive outside university? You survive outside university by learning to learn, to unlearn, and relearn. Secondly, I talk about it and say that you must have an attitude. This is in my chapter two. Your attitude determines your altitude. And I quote the story of David, I no, 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 of Joshua. Joshua, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph in the Bible. Joseph in the Bible, um, some of you may not be acquainted with Joseph in the Bible. In the Bible, he became prime minister of Egypt. He had an attitude of gratitude. He had an attitude of excellence. He had an attitude of hard work and an attitude of gladness. What attitude do you have? If your attitude against a lecturer is wrong, you will not pick from them. And I speak that to you as I speak it to myself. Because sometimes there are leaders in my life who've provided certain leadership things to me. And because my attitude to them is not right, I am unable to pick from them and I miss out. You're going to go to the workspace. No, you're going to go to LDC, some of you. You've had all kinds of negative stories from LDC. When we were at LDC a few years ago, we had been told that a person must die at LDC before the year ends. Every year loses somebody, death. The second thing we were told is that the failure rate is going to be very high. And indeed it was. But some of us said, no, 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 we are not going to accept that kind of attitude. We are going to have an attitude that says we will work hard, do our best, 
excel and we shall pass. And that is exactly what we did. We worked hard, joined discussion groups, uh, had the right attitude, so much so that I personally did not look for a school or, or, or a law firm to do internship. No. The head back was at that time just identified me and said, Daniel, there is a law firm we are recommending you to go and do your internship for it. my clerkship. And that's where I went. And interestingly, that law firm, which is Shonubi Musoke, gave me so much work to do. I enjoyed every bit. I wrote a report that was almost over 30 pages. <laughs> and I remember many people in my year and, and the years that followed kept on using that precedent that I had created. Until I'm told LDC said, no, 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 the maximum of a report should be six pages. What is your attitude? The other thing that you need to take in at the, at the back of your mind in order to survive, you need mentors. In this book, which I encourage all of you to read, friends, in this book, which is just 35,000. I mean, two of you can each contribute 15 and 20, and you have a copy between the two of you. Read this book and value the content that is in it. In this book, I talk about mentorship. I detail my mentorship journey right from secondary school. The people who have mentored me. Mentorship is both horizontal as well as vertical. I actually advise that men should mentor fellow men, but I also take caution that I've been mentored. Excuse me, I've been mentored by ladies. But the place of mentorship is so critical because your mentor helps you learn certain things much faster than you would ever have done. Your mentor helps you because they have been there before and you do not have to make the same mistakes that they have made. Your mentor introduces you to different things as different spaces. Mentorship has been defined as a mutual relationship with an intentional agenda designed to convey specific content along with life wisdom from one individual to another. I talk about my mentorship journey in Olevo, narrating stories of, of the boys older than me who taught me Simple things, such as you don't walk around the street while eating mangoes and the juice is dripping down your shirt. If I hadn't been mentored, maybe that's what I'd be doing right now. I talk about mentorship in the church space. I talk about mentorship in the university. I talk about mentorship where I am teaching. I talk about mentorship. And then I even talk about the, the challenges and the possibilities of long distance mentorship. And I finally, call a charge on each one of you who is listening to me to mentor somebody because the best way for you to gain from your mentorship journey is to mentor someone else be they in p7 be they in s6 s5 name it mentor someone mentor somebody be mentored in order to survive i can assure you the scholarships i got to study abroad came through a mentoring relationship. My, my working at UCU, Shonubi Mustoke, Makere University, all the deals and opportunities I have had, including this one, are a result of a mentoring relationship. My mentor wrote a book. I had to write a book. My mentor went in certain spaces. I have been able to go into those spaces. All right. Let me answer two questions and then we can have a Q&A uh, session because I know I can't um, handle everything. LDC. And I want to talk about LDC. By God's grace, I went through LDC without injuries. I've told you we had a discussion group. We worked hard. Some people who worked harder than I, who I felt worked harder than I, maybe failed a subject or two. And those who did not um, may, may have gone scot-free. But the failure rates at LDC and any professional bar exam in the whole world 
are always high. Because what you study at the university is totally different from what you study at LDC. LDC assumes that you know everything from the university. But for LDC, it's about resilience. LDC is about organization. LDC is about preparation. LDC is about learning to write fast and to write legibly. That is LDC for you. So the possibility that something can go wrong is always there. In my time, they told us, even if you come with a wheelbarrow, it is okay. Come with your wheelbarrow of books. Come. The, the argument is, with your wheelbarrow of books, are you able to pick the right book that you need for the specific question? That only happens if you have prepared ahead of time. That's LDC for you. So failure has happened. And I've been in a space where I've been able to talk to and listen to stories of disgruntled students, of students who are in pain, of students who feel cheated, um, of students who have failed, of students criticizing the LDC for whatever it didn't do right, um, and so on and so forth. I have listened, I have cautioned, I, I have counseled, I have, I have, I have, you know, felt with them, I've emphasized with them. But LDC teaches us one lesson. How do we deal with failure? How do you deal with failure? Whether you want it or not, failure is going to come knocking at your door at one point in time. Failure will come knocking at your door. It will be a failed relationship. You're in love with this girl. I remember talking to a student at Makere who could no longer read because he had given his virginity to this girl and she had moved on and found someone else after that. He had given her all his money and so on, and she had moved on. How do you deal with failure in a relationship? It could be failure because you trusted the church leader and the church leader has disappointed you. Maybe the church has even closed. It could be failure in the workspace to see someone that you respected so much and he is cutting corners, paying bribes, you know, and things such as that. It could be failure of a court case where you were sure that your client had a good case and you just don't understand how it could have failed. It could be failure that your favorite candidate has not become the member of parliament, or you yourself have not been able to win uh, in a certain race that you are involved in. How do we deal with failure? A few weeks ago, we had a Zoom webinar on failure. And one of the things we talked about was that failure does not determine or does not describe who you are. I am who I am today because of the failures that I have gone through. I failed an examination before. I failed a class before. I have failed in a relationship before. I have failed uh, in, in picking, in being able to, um, uh, to to choose to get onto the plane on time before. I have failed in relationships before. Name it. I've made mistakes. I've lost money. We went into a business deal, having borrowed money from the bank, my wife and I, and we were cheated. Name it, we have failed again and again and again. But failure does not determine who I am. Failure is just a lesson of, I will not do it that way next time. Failure pushes you to realize that, yes, that wasn't possible today, but next time it will be possible. There are some, there was a, a marathon that was in Uganda a while back, probably 2012, I don't recall. And one of our runners, I don't know if it was Kiprotich or another, just his legs failed. 
and he, he, he failed to complete. And Ugandans bashed him and criticized him and so on. At the next race, guess what? He won gold and he's been winning ever since then. What is your attitude towards failure? Lastly, the majority of you who are listening to me are millennials. You were born between 1980 and uh, 2000 or 2002, thereabouts. We describe you or you are described as millennials. The thing about millennials is that, by and large, millennials have been pampered by their parents. Not all of them, but the general description is that you have been pampered by your parents. You've never confronted failure. Your parents are your first line of defense. They are the shields and your, 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 your swords against teachers while you are growing up. And in many situations, you have not yet confronted hard life. You've been driven in cars, some of you. Even me, I drive my children in cars. I've also been driven in a car, I mean, I shouldn't uh, pretend. But the point I'm making is that the millennial has, has been brought up in a certain way that is so different from others. Yesterday, but one, I was talking to uh, one of the senior lawyers who told me of how she used to walk to the uni to, to, to her secondary school and couldn't even afford shoes in that time. My mother walked to, to her secondary school barefooted. Shoes were a privilege, they were not a priority. Cars were a rare commodity. But because of the experiences our parents went through, they do not want their children to go through similar circumstances. And so many times you find parents are very involved. But the challenge of being an over-involved parent is that your child is not able to build certain muscle structures. You know, it's like assisting a butterfly to kick out of its pupa stage and yet a, a butterfly needs to develop the muscle to push out of the of the pupa stage of that cocoon in order to strengthen its wings and for blood to get into those wings for it to be able to fly so the question is the question is when you do a self-reflection on who you are are you able to, do you have the grit to be able to achieve certain things? I talk about grit in this book. And I say we need grit to be able to hold on to something, fight that thing, and basically hashtag Tulemerako until we win. Like the Greeks being able to be steadfast, and that you are going to need. In my page seven of this book, I talk about developing a thick skin, a thick skin. Are you easily offended when people speak to you or criticize you? Do you burst out into tears? Do you feel the world has come to an end? Do you have a thick skin? Do you have the grit to do certain things? I've said quite a lot of things. I thought that I would speak for 30 minutes, but it seems uh, nobody was telling me to stop. Um, I hope in the many things I have said, you have learned a few things. Someone asked for emerging opportunities. Let me tell you, opportunities are created. You create the opportunity. I will tell you about transitional justice I'll tell you about ICT as emerging fields for the law career, and that is true. I'll tell you about developments in civil procedure. Now we've spoken so much about oil and gas. At Makerere, we are now participating in, um, uh, in a moot in South Africa that deals with uh, uh, space law. 
I remember when I started teaching at, at, at Makerere and I was teaching international law, I said a few things about, we used to invite a guest lecturer on space law. Now we are sending teams to talk about space law. Because the law of the space is there. When I was studying in Makerere, I did not know about the law of the sea until I went to do my master's. Nowadays, agriculture, law and agriculture are big things. Actually, someone said that the best investment today is in, is in feeding the population. Having farms to feed the population. My question is, as we think through these opportunities, things such as uh, East African integration law, it's coming. African Union law, it's coming. There is a lot available to you with just the click of, uh, of Google, emerging areas. But you need to ask yourself this question. What can I do that will make me competitive? What must I do that will make me competitive? In order for you to find out what you can do to make you competitive, you have to ask the question, where am I very good? Like on this area, in this area, I'm an expert. I've just read a book called The Outliers. The Outliers. The book talks about, can I spend 10,000 hours, 10,000 hours, and develop a speciality in something. Secondly, what is that thing I am passionate about? I'm good at, I'm passionate about it. And lastly, it will bring me money. I'm very good at it, I'm very passionate about it, and it's going to bring me money. John Maxwell, is the leading speaker leadership coach in the world as far as i'm concerned and where does he make his money from speaking training coaching businesses pastors leadership gurus name them john maxwell has been there to the pope to the president name it john maxwell I read his books, attend his, I'm attending one, I'm attending uh, uh, John Maxwell training right now. And I hope to be a certified member. So where are you, S? where are you an S? For Michael Jordan, it was basketball. For Bill Gates, it was the computer. For Michael, jo Michael Jackson, it was music. For President Museveni, it's being president. Where are you good? Very good. Where are you passionate? And what can bring you a lot of money? The intersection there is what Jim Collins has called the hedgehog concept. And I'm happy to talk about it a little bit more in our Q&A. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm grateful for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. The, the, the discussion was um, encouraging and it was worth. That's why I did not actually interrupt because I was enjoying uh, everything that you are talking about. Uh, personally, I have been able to capture a few things, uh, especially understanding your true north, uh, who you truly are, as far as mission, vision, values, and purpose is concerned, then the fact that uh, your network is your net worth and um, how prepared a person can be. Because as you've said, everything and anything can change in a twinkle of an eye. So you need to be prepared for that change because the only consistent thing, as he stated, is change. Uh, he also talked about uh, us working on our attitudes, being able to learn and learn and relearn. 
the mentorship bit and having the grit, what he called the thick skin. Um, everything that you've stated, doctor, and I cannot thank you more. Uh, allow me, uh, before we actually go into the Q&A, recognize uh, some of the few members who, who we have on this, uh, President Bernard Owundo. You all know President Bernard Owundo. He's uh, the president of the East African, East African Law Society. We are so glad that you attended this webinar with us. Um, I also saw one of our lecturers, Mr. Patson Arinaitwe. Uh, we're also glad that you're in attendance. And everyone else who is in attendance, we are glad and proud that you've actually created off time to come and be with us. Uh, we are going to go into Q and A. Um, some of you can, can actually raise up your hands. I'll be able to pick on you. Others can type their questions in chat, uh, and we'll also land on them. Um, if you have a question, you can uh, put your, you can raise your hand, and I will pick on you. And uh, others, you can type in chat. Um, um, uh, the, anyway, we, I'm not seeing some of you putting your hands up. Don't you have questions from uh, the discussion that doctor gave us? If you do not, then I think I will take the chance and the obligation to, you know, ask as some of you are preparing. Doctor, I um, I have a question. Uh, first, it's about mentorship. Um, if you could help me explain the process or what a person should actually look out, because I believe we have uh, different uh, aspirations and it is not that all those aspirations are going to be found in, 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 in a mentor. So what should a person be keen on uh, when choosing a mentor? Then question number two uh, is, um, how best can a person work on their attitude? Because when it comes to a field like LDC, of course, we've had stories. Some of them are actually threatening stories, and uh, some of them are horrible about what happens there. Uh, how best can a person work on their mental or on their attitude so as to be ready to cope up with the contemporary world? Uh, Bayan, your hand is up. Bayan, you can ask your question. Bayan, you can mute, unmute and ask a question. Bayan, your hand is up and I am picking on you to actually ask a question. Um, doctor, I think you can take it from there as uh, we are working on Bayan. Thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, respond to the two questions that you have raised uh, to me. The first one is, how do we choose mentors? One, I earlier said that it's important for you to know or to have a conversation with yourself to find out who you are, you may not get everything correctly. You may not know everything to the point. But you must be able to ask yourself and have a fair idea of who you are. What kind of, for example, what kind of personality are you? And I talk about that in the book. And I share 
that we have different personalities. For example, uh, I'm a sanguine. Um, sanguines are, you know, normally outgoing. They are the life of the party, uh, among other things. Now, who are you? Are you a sanguine? Or are you a choleric? Eh? The cholerics are, are short-tempered, fast, irritable. In other spaces, they are called reds. Some are a bit choleric and a bit of sanguine. You need to find out. The melancholic is analytical, wise, and quiet. I, I, I think uh, Mr. President, President Bernard Wundo is a, is, is a melancholic, very analytical, very wise, very quiet. You will not, you're not going to find him shouting. Even if he were as to speak to you, he would not be as, um, you know, as loud mouthed, as, 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 as loud as I am right now. You know, for you to listen to him, you have to, uh, you know, listen to who he's saying, what he's saying, and so on and so forth. That's what I think he is. Then you have the Phlegmatics, these are relaxed, they are peaceful people. Now, in most cases, our temperaments are a little bit of both. I think I have a little bit of choleric in me at some point, uh, probably have a little bit of phlegmatic in me. You know, you need to take the test and Elizabeth, your president can give you some some um, some forms where you can identify what your personality traits are. Now, having identified who what your vision is, who you are, your kind of temperament, what works for you, and so on, taken some of the tests that I mentioned in the book, like the Myers Briggs type uh, indicator, among others, then you begin to look for those people who can speak into the kind of individual that you are. If, for example, you want to be um, a lawyer that is good in, um, or that specializes in oil and gas, like someone was asking, you may most likely have to go and look out for, for a lawyer who can mentor you in that regard. So look through who are those lawyers in oil and gas who can mentor you, you know? And nobody says you must have only one mentor. No. The other thing I'm passionate about is marriages and relationships, by the way. I, I, I love to, to see uh, relationships prosper because I know that the family is such a powerful unit. So find somebody who is also passionate. You've started a relationship. When I started my, my dating relationship with my wife, then girlfriend, I looked for people who had working relationships, and I mentioned them here. People who loved their wives and, and where I could learn. So the mentor must be that person who has something you want to pick. So you look for them. You look for that person that you want to pick something from. And remember I have said, you look for the person. Now, sometimes, you may not be able to get the person that you want. You know, you want to be a president of Uganda, you want to be mentored by President Museveni. It may not be possible. But you look for someone who is passionate about leadership. You want to be an expert in labor law? Talk to Mr. Patson. You want to be an expert in PPPs? Talk to Mr. Wundo. You want to be an expert in international humanitarian and criminal law? talk to, to me or talk to Patricia Bacco and so on and so forth. Or ask them to point you to the people that you can talk to. Ask them, point me to a person. Or can you help me make it easy for me to reach person X or person Y? Those lawyers who come around you, those individuals who come around you, who have a heart for others, start with them. What you never should do is to sit back and say, they will find me. Nobody is going to find you. You must look for them. You must look for them. You must call them. 
you must write to them. You must seek them. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. That's the only way. Two, get into spaces where you can begin to interact with people of a certain scale. I've said, when you are, you know, when, 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 when you're a lion and you're hanging out with sheep, you're not going to grow really. The Bible talks about iron sharpening iron, you know. I, I, I used to fight with uh, the fellowship at Makere University, the, the, the Christian fellowship at Makere University. I used to tell them, you guys are Christian law students. But you're spending a lot of your time hanging out with pastors. I have no problem with hanging out with pastors per se. But you are Christian law students who are looking for opportunities and mentoring relationships to be able to be excellent lawyers, practitioners, policymakers, you know, lawmakers and so on, judges, magistrates, but you rarely invite these people to come to your fellowship and speak to you. How are you going to be mentored by these people? Who is going to recommend you when you're applying for a job? It's not going to be the pastor. I have nothing against pastors, by the way. I am also a pastor of sorts, anyway. Um, and I am also being pastored. But there are special spaces you can't spend your whole time, um, I don't know, hanging out with a group of individuals who are not related to your line of, 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 uh, of leadership, you know. Unless you, 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 that is where you want to go, then that is fine. You want to play basketball, hang out with basketball players, no problem. You want to become a sports law expert, yes, I would understand you in Nachivubo and these spaces, understanding the law, hanging out with Mr. Makavenge and others. I would understand that. But you can't be hanging out with smokers and drunkards 24-7 and you expect to pass a law exam. And this is what has happened to some of my students. Join the university, very excellent students. Some of them have even been the best from their schools they have trounced the pre-entry exam they study only the first semester at Makere and the next they are hanging out in their rooms you know thinking they have arrived they have not yet you have no paper to your name or because your parents have a lot of money and you're driving their vehicles you think you've arrived no you haven't so look for mentors. Look for people who will speak to you. I actually talk about some of the things I've engaged with with some of the students. You know, Your mentor is the one who tells you, go and have a shave of that beard. Go trim your hair. Go brush your teeth. You know, Stop wearing sandals when you come to the university classroom. No, you are a lawyer. You can wear your sandals over the weekend, but you can't come, you know, in sandals and, and sleeveless t-shirts um, for a lecturer, for, for a lecture in the law of thoughts and you think, you know, it's a free country. No, you are creating an impression. You're creating an impression. And I talk about it in the book. What you see is what you get. So look for the mentors by hanging out in spaces where you can find those mentors. Come to the Fellowship of Christian Lawyers. Attend the fellowship of Christian lawyers. Invite more Christian lawyers to speak to you. Or invite generally other lawyers to speak to you. I, I, you know, invite other Christian lawyers, your alumni, to come and speak to you. And then you start reaching out to them. Don't ask them for money because then you're repulsing. You're repulsive. Ask them for ideas. Ask them for advice. You know, how do you work on your attitude? How do you work on your attitudes? First of all, you need to start reading books. <laughs> you need to read books. Books on changing certain things, certain mannerisms. How many books are you reading? Normally in my law class, I always ask uh, students, 
apart from from Glanville Williams, what else are you reading? Someone will say, I'm reading the Bible. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a good book. I agree. It's a powerful book. But what else are you reading? Because those books change our mindset. You enter into this world and you're like wowed by people and the things they have done. In this book, I talk about somewhere in, in the part of grit. I, I talk about an individual who... Who, who had gone mountain climbing and and his hand got stuck you know a rock boulder landed on his hand and he had to cut his hand off himself I'm like wow I too am oh wowed by that kind of of, 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 of individual what books are you reading because those books start showing you that, man, I have to work on my attitude. I can no longer sit. I can no longer take the back seat. You know, I can no longer, you know, take life easy. You know, one of the things I have learned in selling this book is that if I don't put it in your face, you guys are not going to buy it. I can see many of you are asking me for a soft copy, the PDF version, basically a free copy. But value the content you're receiving. Value the content you're receiving. 35,000 shillings between three students can easily be found. Each one paying 10,000. You buy a book that belongs to the three of you and you can read it as many times as you want. But you have put value in the book. And when you put value in a book, you are forced to read the book. Because you know that my value is in that book. My value is in that book. But when you get a free PDF copy, oh, yes, Victoria at Kunda, it's on Kindle. The book is available on Kindle. I remember attending a session one time and uh, someone was selling a book on Africa and on leadership. And he said, oh, this book costs, I think he said 40000 at that time. And we we're all, no, it is too expensive. And then he rebuked us and said, you guys, you know, many of you will look for money to buy neckties, shirts. An average shirt today, second hand, is about 35,000 shillings. Um, a border border ride to and fro town for a week, you'll be talking 10k or plus per day before you know it um, you know you've spent 40,000 shillings internet bundles how much do you spend on internet a haircut you know depending on where you go if you don't go to the very expensive ones you'll probably spend 10,000 shillings to clean yourself up every every other week you know Buying roll on, you spend about 15,000 shillings. But for this book, how much value do you see in it? Is the question I ask you. How much value do you see in this book? You know? When are you going to start building your personal book collection? saying i spent money on this book i have to make sure i read this book i can underline this book and i've even I, I, because when you read the book you now develop the you, you 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 have the permission not that you don't have it but you have the permission to call up the author and say but here when you wrote this what did you mean you know i don't seem to agree with you on this point and and then you have an engagement with the author on the book basically all i'm telling you is that what attitude you have to value <laughs> what attitude you have to value you know so i'm encouraging you really I'm, I'm i'm pushing you to buy the book because i think it's a good book and i think it's a book you can recommend to somebody some of you are looking for gifts to be give people buy them this book they'll thank you later you know and many times I've seen people telling me, I wish I'd read this when I was still in school. You know, Akankwasa is asking, how do I access the book for purchase? Elizabeth has books. She has, I think, over 20 or 15 copies with her. Just contact Elizabeth. 
if you are not able to contact Elizabeth and um, you fail, just let me know. I will try to organize a border border to reach you. But I'm sure the same border border can reach you from Elizabeth's home to where you are. But buy the book and enjoy it. Read the stories, underline, you know, do whatever you want to do, but it will be your thing. And it's a worthwhile investment for, for this lockdown season. Yeah. I don't know if that has helped, but our attitude is very critical. So to develop attitude, you read books, you hang out with the right people. You know, they challenge you to start doing certain things. You know, they help you improve your attitude. You know, when you see people doing things right, what's your attitude? Do you want to encourage them and copy them and follow? Or your, or your attitude is that, oh, that one is a show off. When I was teaching at uh, UCU, I had a, a, a law student. I will not tell you his name. He's now a successful lawyer in town. Whenever I would arrive to school, he would, um, he, when, whenever I would arrive to teach them, he would come to my vehicle um, and, and then he would pick my bags and uh, he would say, um, I'm going to walk. I'm going to carry these books and walk with you into the lecture, into the lecture room. And, um, and you know, some of his classmates started saying, oh, please, you know, this guy wants free marks and so on and so forth. <laughs> um, but up to today, that simple act that he did, I hold him with a certain, I hold him in a certain regard. I hold him with a certain regard because he saw some value in me. You know, he saw some value in me. Am I saying that you should all now move around holding lecturers bags? No, 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 no. I'm just saying that certain times an opportunity arrives and you're able to, to, to run and grab it at that point. Of course, I didn't allow him to carry my bags every day. He probably did it once or twice. And, and, and in that conversation we had from the vehicle to the, lec to the lecture room, I developed a relationship with him. I would later on supervise his, uh, I would supervise his uh, dissertation. Um, I write recommendations for him when he's applying to do his masters and PhDs and so on, when he's applying for jobs. Because we developed a mentorship relationship just from that single act of honor, you know, of honor, being honorable. Yeah. All right. I hope that answers the question a bit. I, uh, other, others like um, some of your lecturers can say a few things uh, in addition. I don't know if Patricia and others want to say something else. They may have a few other angles to it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Doctor. We have um, a question from Bayern and uh, Victoria. If you, if if uh, if a technical team could unmute Bayern, and then later Victoria. Yes, hello. Yes, sir. You can ask your question. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, and thank you so much for uh, the efforts. And maybe also thank you, doctor, for the knowledge you're sharing. Uh, now, my question would specifically go to, you have addressed uh, a little bit on LDC. And now my question is to the extent that there is an open-minded person in law school and is a law student. However, he's losing interest in going to LDC. Now, what would you say about that? A lawyer who has a law degree but does not want to go to LDC, would you have a comment for him? And secondly, I would want maybe also a further short comment on the corruption within the legal uh, system. Thank you. Thank you very much. One of the reasons why I, I, okay, may, may, may one, mm, okay, let's start with the first question. What, my, my first question to the person who doesn't want to go to LDC is why don't you want to go to LDC? Because you see the advantage of going to LDC is, is your taught the skill of putting into practice what you have learned at the university. 
Because you see, at the you, you, I mean, you can be a Male Mabilizi and sue everybody. Male was my former student, and I, I know him, you know, a bit, a bit, yeah, not too much, but I, I know him because he used to engage me as well when I taught him constitutional law. But for how long is Male Mabilizi going to, uh, to do what he does? Let's say he does it forever, right? But there are certain causes Male cannot. Uh, for example, he will never represent. Um, he will never represent uh, clients. You know, one of the most treasurable moments I had was the day my mom became my client. I had a court case up country, and my mother needed my legal my legal knowledge my legal you know and and i and i came into court my mother was there and i represented her i remember leading her her, her in giving evidence and um I, if there is a time i was most proud of of myself it's that time when i was able to give back in fact the the the, the, the when when i'd led her evidence uh, the person on the other side said I, they don't have questions for her. Um, and and uh, I mean, it was a special moment for me. And at some point in time, I was able to write some legal documentation for her. Those are moments that you only appreciate uh, in certain spaces and times. LDC helps you to, to know how to put into practice certain things. Yes, you can learn them on your own. I totally agree. But you need that qualification. You need that qualification. And if you're keeping away from LDC, one, because of fear, or two, because you, either it's because of fear, it's, it's not because of fear, really, that you're keeping away from LDC. But if you say, no, I want to do business, um, well, go ahead and do business. You'll never practice the law, but you did law as a foundational course and you want to do other things, no problem. But if you're keeping away from LDC because of fear, then you need to reconsider and say, why must I fear something I've not yet confronted? You see, when they said 90% of LDC students failed, it does not mean they failed the whole course Totally. Some may have failed the subject. Some may have failed too. Some may have failed the core subject. Some may have passed all the core subjects and just failed the supplementary course, like maybe taxation for lawyers. You know, some may have failed one, some two, some three courses. But all of them cannot, uh, because of that failure, they cannot graduate. They cannot graduate. You know. So before you even fail, go and learn. Try your hand at it. Have the attitude, the right attitude that says, when I go to LDC, because that's what we did. You can ask Dr. Anthony Kakosa, you can ask Eric Hatanga, uh, and a few other classmates of mine. We went in and said we are determined to change the narrative of LDC. And we went in and we studied. And we worked hard and we participated in class and i even took up leadership space at ldc i was a farm leader you know um and we even had fellowship at ldc so before you give up why do you want to take the advice of others before you try it out yourself there is nothing that cannot be failed in this world. Even marriages fail. Those listening to me, you know that some of you have been in relationships and the relationships haven't worked out. I've also been thrown out of a relationship before. I've liked certain girls, I've expressed my liking for them and they've said no. And I'm like, okay, life goes on. But now the one I have now, my wife, I am happy, very happy. But I had to be able to go through those experiences to appreciate what I have today. All right, corruption in the judiciary. 
Yes, life goes on. You know, you, 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 you. <laughs> I mean, think about it. When you are learning how to walk, how many times did you fall down? When you are running to ride a bicycle, at least I learned to ride a bicycle when I when I, I was in charge of my faculties. Man, I fell down so many times. You know, I remember riding along uh, Kamocha Road one time, and I and I turned the bike, and I crashed of all spaces as if there was no other space to crash. I crashed right into a. A sewage system that had that was bubbling over sewage and i was like really but then i get, got on my bike and rode home and i took a bath after that you know took a bath after that those of you who like cooking you know many times you put the milk on and it burns and you learn those of you who are in boarding school you know that you those days we had to have a percolator. One time when I was using a percolator for the first time in boarding school, I put my finger in to find out whether it's actually working. Oh, actually, I put my finger in to find out whether it's heating up. Little did I know that I would get an electric shock. You know, and I learned. So failure is part and parcel of us. You will be sacked from your job. You will lose money. So don't run away from LDC before you try. Who knows that you're going to pass anyway? Actually, just because you have failed a subject in LDC does not mean you're a failure. It means that whoever has marked you does not think that you've gotten it right. And remember, you can actually go to court after passing it and argue a case against the person who marked you and win the case against them. That is life. That is life. Corruption in the judiciary. This is my attitude. My attitude is that when you don't know what you have in the middle of your heart, in your heart, you know, when you don't know who you are, you tend to be. Um, easily moved by certain things. For example, you ask people, why, why are you taking bribes? They'll give you a variety of reasons. I'm not being paid enough. Um, I have uh, certain challenges I need to meet. Or the usual one is, this is Uganda. You pay me and I do the service for you. I personally think that when you know who you are, when you know your true north, you cannot ask someone to pay you for a service you're already being employed to do. You know? I personally feel that I cannot take money from an old widow in order to represent her case. I cannot slice off estate of, 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 of a deceased person, you know, just because... I am in a position that can make it possible for me to take more land from somebody. Um, yeah, there are certain things I can't do. One time I was listening to a, a taxi conductor, not a, a, a special hire driver, who said that he chanced upon an accident one time, and um, he, it was a, a, a white man who had died, and he said he pulled off the man's watch and took it and went. And I was like, how do I do that? You know? So your value system prevents you from doing certain things. Am I saying that I haven't fallen before? Of course I have. I haven't taken bribes, but I've been in situations where someone has asked me for money in order to do certain things. And I, I remember on one occasion, they took money from me. But later on, I have now developed the muscle to say no. I'm not going to pay a bribe for, for something. Other people can be able to say that I've never paid a bribe or received any. And I am thankful to God for them. What is your value system? What is your value system? This is what I wrote. This is what I wrote to a, a, a group uh, just today. I told them, 
that the justice law and order sector of our nation is riddled with frustrations, corruption, and the abuse of the rule of law. At the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity, we started and continue to hold weekly Zoom prayers each Wednesday morning to ask the Lord to intervene. But we are also encouraging and supporting our members by mentorship and by recommendation to take up these critical positions and influence by being honest, corrupt, free magistrates, judges, and practitioners. Some testimonies are now coming through. Testimonies of God finally opening doors for Christian magistrates to be promoted. Testimonies of Christian magistrates being commended by lawyers for all clients for handling their courts well, etc. We have more Christians on the bench as judges and magistrates, and we are seeing some of them come out exceptionally in their decisions, their actions, and their demeanor. There is still a lot of work to be done as we gather critical numbers, mentor young people, and encourage those already in these spaces. We know the tide is turning. May the Lord continue to give us spiritual helpers and inspire our leaders who fear the Lord and, have, and love their nation. Amen. That is my response to you, uh, Bayan. But I am going to do my part. There are some magistrates who are my former students that I continue having conversations with. And I keep telling them, keep pushing, do the right thing, and the Lord will honor you. He'll honor the work you have done. And some are being promoted. Others we are waiting, but some are being promoted. But God is positioning people in the justice law and order sector, in the judicial service commission, in the chief registrar, by the way, is a Christian now. The, the, the principal judge, we are praying for him, I think he's also a Christian. I know he used to teach at UCU. ETC, ETC. The question is, work on yourself. Prepare yourself. Because when the call comes, you must be ready. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there is a question from uh, Madame Victoria Ankunda. She's asking that how best can one develop themselves in this season, uh, the COVID season? Okay. Um, if, I, if I get it, could you repeat that question? How can one do what? How best so can I mean. one develop themselves? How best can one develop themselves in this season? Okay. There is nothing as amazing as reading a book. Guys, there is nothing as amazing as reading a book. Read books. Read books. Open your mind. Open your mind. Everything I'm telling you, everything I'm telling you did not come to me through a dream. Not that I don't believe in the power of dreams. I do. But read books. Books have made me a different creature altogether. Some have read under a lot of stress and pressure, but have read them. Read books. Two, you have WhatsApp, you have internet. Look for information. Email people. WhatsApp them with your questions. You know, President Bernard is there. He's president of all lawyers in East Africa. They are judges and magistrates that if you wanted them, you just ask us. You know, I've introduced some of my students and some of the young lawyers to mentors of their choice. Someone says, I want to meet a certain mentor like this, and I'm like, okay, and I talk to them and I connect them. If it doesn't work out, I look for another one for them until they find someone they can have a regular conversation with. The only thing is that when you get into that mentoring relationship, don't start asking the mentor to answer your examination questions for you or to pay for your air time. Because some of, those are some of the frustrations that some of the Christian lawyers have shared with me. So look for mentors, WhatsApp them or call them. 500 shillings, you can make a phone call. Introduce yourself. Work on your portfolio. Work on your CV. 
you can do that you can do that then find something else to do find something else to do if it means going into the compound at your home and planting cabbage go ahead and plant cabbage my mother was a lecturer at Makerere and we used to stay where the current St. Francis Student Center is. And there was a big plot of land there, unoccupied. I used to go dig and plant maize and whatever with my mom. One time, some people asked me that, don't you feel scared that uh, people are going to see you, you know, um, doing that? I said, man, as they are laughing at me, I will be harvesting maize and eating it. Yes, Francis, Jen Patricia Bako says, do some exercises. I've just come from a walk this morning with my wife. I looked after rabbits, I still do, you know. There's a lot you can do. Write a book. Write a book. Call young people in your neighborhood uh, with social distancing and start teaching them about the law. There's a lot you can do, especially when you start giving to others. Clean up the house. Remove the mosquitoes and uh, the, 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 the spiders. Cook for your father a meal and surprise him. Cook for your mother a meal, surprise her. Arrange this, you know, arrange the clothes in the, in, in the, in, wherever you are. Make yourself valuable. Make yourself valuable at home. Ask your parents for ideas. Some of them may have more ideas than I have. Ask them for ideas and say, hey, what else can I do? You know, I've been telling my son the whole of today, he's no longer doing exams. I've been telling him, go and collect all the stones that are in the driveway. And then he collects, then he comes back on the laptop and I say, no, you go back, collect more stones. I am teaching him to take responsibility of his um, surroundings. Because some of you, by the time you went to secondary school, you already had gardeners and uh, flower bed maintainers and so on. In Mwiri, you had to look after your own flower beds at the school. <laughs> One thing I remember is that I created more flower beds, which made more work for people. But uh, anyway, we did it, you know. Make yourself relevant. Make yourself relevant. Do you know what I did when I was at Makere University School of Law and what I'm planning to do? Let, 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 let me say this uh, to you and, uh, and uh, whichever way you take it is up to you. Um, at one point, I noticed that the flower gardens at the School of Law Makere were in poor shape. The flower gardens were in poor shape. So I picked flowers from my own home and took them to the, to the Makere University School of the Gardens and planted more flowers. Interestingly, some of the workers at Makere, I will not tell you who, but some of the support staff started picking the flowers and taking to their own homes. And I said, no, 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 this is for the, your workplace. It's for our workplace. And if there was no lockdown, I was going to do it again because they have now overgrown. I want to plant some more. So those of Makere University who are here, like Grace Tinsawa, the president, yeah, we are going to do some work on those gardens. And I ask you to join me in doing so. We are going to do whatever necessary to make our surroundings better and for us to be relevant in our situations. The other thing you can do is call up your friends, send them encouraging messages. Call up your hobbies, send them encouraging messages, tell them not to give up, you know. Don't be a purveyor of doom and gloom. Be a purveyor of, of, of encouragement. My friend Eric Hatanga, I always share this testimony ad infinitum. When we are doing the, the, the oral examinations at LDC, uh, when we are doing the oral examinations at LDC, uh, my friend Eric Hatanga, he, he, he stood at a strategic place. And whoever would come out of those oros so distraught, he would encourage them and say, don't give up, you will make it. It is okay. You have, I'm sure you have passed. 
So people and ladies would come out crying and whatever, he would be there strategically to encourage them. That is ministry. So when was the last time you arranged the books of your father or, you know, improved the situation in your home, you know? Make yourself relevant in your, in your place. Make yourself relevant, you know? That is what I can say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we 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 only we are only going to take on a question from Francis Casango, and then we shall give um, some few minutes to Dr. Ruheza to conclude. Then we will come concluding remarks from President Owundo and the President of Kapala Campus, Kasango. You can ask um, your yes, question. Yes, um, I'm here. Good afternoon. My name is Francis Kasango. I'm a student at Uganda Christian University. I'm in my third year. Uh, when I was doing my second year, it was an online setting. It became physical towards the second semester. But my parents thought it wise that I go to school and have my online semester from there, which I did, and it gradually helped me improve my CGPA so much. But now the issue is this, it appears that the, the second wave of COVID may find us at home when we can't move. And the truth is to a bigger percentage home is such a big distraction. So how can someone go about it when you're at home and you're being, and you have to do two things at the same time. You have to study, Zoom online, and you don't even have access to so many books. And at the same time, you have to be at home. And of course, you don't be very dormant at home. You have to be productive. So some more guidance on that. Thank you. OK. Uh, when life presents you with a lemon, what do you do? You make lemonade, isn't it? Yeah? When life presents you with uh, a lemon, you make lemonade. Um, in my view, it is not where you are that matters. It is what attitude, first of all, you have about where you are. And secondly, how you decide to plan to use the opportunities of where you are. It is not where you are that matters. It is what you are doing about it. When life presents a lemon, you make a lemonade. You're at home now. Look at your body clock. How does it work? Is it the kind of body clock that um, makes it easier for you to work very early in the morning or not? Or you can work at any time that you feel like doing it. Can you work at night or not? Because right now, I don't know whether you're going to continue having Zoom classes. I, I don't know the architecture right now. But if you have an opportunity to have a, a laptop, you have an opportunity to have internet, or you have an opportunity to have a phone. Just make do with what you have. It is not good, I agree, but make do with what you have. Why do I say so? I say so because I taught a student at Makerere who was blind but he used to beat the whole class. But he was blind. Couldn't see both eyes. Brilliant mind. All through he used to beat his class. And genuinely, because I taught him, I engaged with him in class. He then came and did his master's degree, but he was blind. I say so because in this book, when I'm talking about grit and determination, I talk about my wife, who I watched with my two eyes. 
She was heavily pregnant with our daughter. She was fully employed with a no-nonsense boss. And yet she was pursuing a diploma at UMI. I have a picture of her seated on the bed. Her daughter is by, our daughter is by her side. She is reading a book, preparing for an examination. And my wife got a first class in that diploma. And then did another one immediately thereafter and got an, I think she got a first class at upper second in the next one, or an upper second in the first one and the first and the first class in the second one. I say so because of the many stories of success that I have seen. I have a calendar that I bought one time that is full of artwork, beautiful art pieces that were drawn by an artist using his foot. Then some of you may have read the book about Johnny, who was, who, who was an artist. She used to paint with her mouth, put the toothbrush in her mouth and paint. The situation we are in is not a good one. But like I said, like the Greeks in Homer's Odyssey, whenever there was change, they adapted to the change. During the first lockdown, when Makere was closed, I told my students that I will be offering a free lecture every Friday at 3 p.m. A free lecture. Those who want to come, you can come. Those who don't want to come, it's okay. You don't have to come. Those who act actively came for my class, when the exams came, they performed very well. Why? Because they had an opportunity to engage with me every friday freely i like to challenge you as long as you have internet as long as you have power as long as you have a gadget bear with the inconvenience bear with the inconvenience the best example i can give is of the women of our world the ladies of our world you see them there all beautiful, made up, nice looking. But there comes a time in the month where they go through extreme pain, the monthly period. And it's very painful because I have three daughters. I understand what they go through. I may not experience the pain. I have three daughters and a wife. I know what it means. But they have to wake up every day, apply that makeup and go to work. Wake up every day, apply that makeup, and go to class. And sometimes do better than ask the men. I can give you example upon example of people who have undergone their overcome their current situations to excel. Maybe the last one I can give you is of the refugees that I worked with, refugees and asylum seekers. Through thick and thin, they have sought to survive. They've sought to survive. In my days, we used to go to Changkwanzi, School of Political Leadership, for a month. When I went to Changkwanzi, I learned that we can survive, man. There are so many things we don't need. We don't need to sleep forever. We don't need to do certain things. We can handle. When I went to Changkwanzi, ah, I learned. And COVID has also taught us that all you need is breath. You just need to be breathing to be able to accomplish so many things. People who, are on, who have gone through COVID will tell you that all they wanted is to be able to breathe. And they are grateful for life. Many times we've been praying to God, Father, I thank you for the gift of life. But until you are unable to breathe, that's when you realize how valuable it is. I talked to a very senior person in our government and he told me that during the first lockdown he had just sold a house for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then he got COVID. He couldn't travel out of the country and yet he had the money. 
he couldn't get treatment, and yet he had the money. He couldn't be vaccinated, and yet he had the money. All he wanted was an opportunity to get proper treatment. So I would like to encourage you. I want to encourage you to have grit. And that is why I really need you guys to read my book. Have the grit to say, no, I will survive. I'll do it. It may not be perfect, but like the Greeks in Odysseus Homer that I read about here, when changes come, you also change. And another change comes, you also change. You will survive. One of my blogs is about plants. Plants are survivors. Plants, ah, give them heat, they will struggle and sustain and survive. Give them extreme rain, they will hand. Give them wind, they will bear with the wind. By the time a plant or a tree breaks a wind, a, 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 a branch, it has tried. Plants are survivors. Are you going to be a plant? Are you going to survive? Are you going to sail? That's why here I say we must learn to soar over this VUCA storm. This VUCA world which is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Today it's, it's Zoom classes. What, what if you have a blackout? Power blackout for a whole month. What will you do? Will you give up on life? What if you fail a subject three times or two times and like at Makere when you have one more chance to do it? Recently at Makere we lost a student because she was doing a subject for the last time and she felt that that was the end of days for her. That if she fails, she will be a failure for life. No. No, 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 no. No. Failing does not determine who you are. So my sister who asked that question, I'd like to encourage you that keep at it, keep at it. Be like the grass in my compound. Every month I cut it down, but it keeps coming up. I cut it down the next two weeks, it keeps coming up. I cut it down again, it keeps coming up. And it will continue to keep, com to keep coming up. Because that's what it means to be Kulemera Ko. Now, I hope that answers you. I wanted to, I don't know if it is possible, I thought I would answer some of the questions that were put in the Q&A. I don't know if it's still possible, but if it is not, maybe you can do it uh, some other time. Um, or if you allow me maybe a minute, I could quickly rush through it. It's up to you, uh, the MC. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Doctor. You have a minute. You have a minute to run through them, then we can call President Bernard. Okay. How can we handle this new era at home, which is a big, big destruction to the law sector? I have answered. Just have a timetable. Have a timetable where you dedicate to reading, for those of you who are not reading. Uh, last night I spent a lot of time, I slept quite late. Um, I was attending my John Maxwell class. Uh, I was I had just finished working on my um, I just finished working on my chapter that I'm I'm writing for a certain publication. Um, yeah, me, being present for my kids as well. Um, I, I got a deal to do some consulting work. You just survive, guys. It is not perfect, but you learn to soar. It won't be perfect, but you learn to soar. How to develop social capital for job connections. Make friends. Be friendly. Hmm? Smile. Don't make it difficult for people to, to, to befriend you, especially uh, the ladies. This baby love also seems to be a lady. Make it easy for boys to say hello to you. You know, Be available um, for such gatherings. Even if people say, guys, let's catch up and just have a conversation and a chat, be available. Make friends. Of course, you classify the friends. Hang out with those people who are who, who will take you somewhere. Not every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to do that. So you have to apply wisdom. All right. I expect to grasp more concept on the millennium concept. I don't know what that one means. Uh, maybe someone will we can engage. How do we tap into opportunities of oil and gas sector? 
I'll leave that for President Bernard. Uh, yeah, Jane Pat Patricia Buck has also said most of her jobs have been through connections. I agree, mine too, and through mentorship. What is the difference between life involving a PC and that involving only a degree? What, which way is better? When you don't have a PC, you cannot be employed in a law firm unless as a researcher. When you have a PC, you cannot advise very... When you don't have a PC, you can't go to court. You can't sign certain documents. And why, why do you want to, to, to not to have that money? Mm -hmm. I'm a lecturer. I do part-time practice. Um, but once in a while, people come and give me work. And I do the work, you know? So the opportunity is available for you please use it please use it please use it um is there a soft copy of the book yes there's an amazon kindle version uh doctor what's your opinion on person that studies law but is considered not go to ldc please go to ldc at least make sure you give it a try and a serious try determined to pass ldc you know maximize the opportunity when you when you still have it you're still young guys that's the truth. You're still young. Uh, my question is about how to balance. Now that we are home, there's a big challenge. Yes, I I think I have answered that one. Um, just timetable yourself. Your parents want you to clean up the compound. Clean up the compound. They want you to cook. Cook. After you're done with that, hide somewhere and attend to your lessons. Get a book hiding the compound. Um, the hedgehog concept was developed by Jim Collins in his book called uh, From Good to Great. Basically, it is a book showing how companies moved from just being good to great companies. And they did that by working on, on, on what in economics you could say the opportunity cost. They looked for that thing where they were very good at they were very talented and they were very passionate about it. They liked what they were doing. They were very good at what they were doing and it would bring them the money. And they did exactly that. It's like, for example, Cafe Java's OCJs, as you know, uh, the way they do it, you know. Um, yeah. Where can I purchase a replica of Dr. Richard's book? I don't know what you mean by replica. Maybe Elizabeth will get me some more information on that. What if I'm doing law and I love it, but I feel like my calling is not encompassed on practice, advise me. No, 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 that is fine. If your call is not in practice, it's okay. You can go and do other things, but you can still go to LDC. LDC gives you the necessary skills to be able to interpret, advise, uh, do corporate work, you don't have to, 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 to go to the courtroom, but you will be much better off at LDC or with the knowledge from LDC. Uh, but if you still think you can do something else apart from LDC, it's all right, you can do it, but just don't go. Don't say I'm not going to LDC and you hide behind fear. If fear is the reason you don't want to go to LDC, then confront your fear, confront that fear. But if you're genuinely saying, you don't want uh, a life of practice, that is fine. You can pursue other callings. It is okay. If you want to do an MBA or whatever, it is fine. But just do not say, I am not going to do LDC because I fear it. And then you hide behind, oh, that's not my calling. No, 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 no. You don't have to go to court every day, but you may even be uh, recently uh, East African Law Society put in a a case before the, the East African Court of Justice. You know, some of the people who drew those pleadings were finishing or had just finished LDC. You need those skills. How best can one deal with failure? Because honestly, it's a hard thing to accept, and yet we have two. Are there any tips for dealing with failure? Yes. Yes, they are, Mr. Asmahani Iman. Uh, failure can be dealt with by the attitude that you have. One, your failure is not what determines who you are. Your failure, having failed something does not mean that is who you are. Just because you have failed in a relationship does not mean you have failed in everything in life. No. Did you know, for example, that uh, uh, Nelson Mandela 
uh, was not failed in his first marriage. You know, he failed as a parent. His first son contracted uh, HIV and died, uh, but he was pursuing something else. He was a human being like every one of us. Peter in the Bible, you know, walked a few steps and then realized he's actually walking on, on water, looked down and started sinking, you know. But that did not mean that Jesus did not pull him up, you know. Um, so something to deal with failure is to know that failure is possible in everything we do. Uh, the, 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 and, and because of that, just to, to, to walk with mentors, it's good for you to walk with mentors and to hear stories of how they have dealt with failure. And then you realize you are not alone. You're not alone. Okay, Denise says, my question is, how do you deal with anxieties within you and society thrown to you after law school? I think, Denise, you need to read my book. Because once you know who you are, you realize you're not racing against anybody. I'm not racing against anyone to achieve anything. You know, life is not a race. You know, you do certain things. Um, you do certain things. And, and, and you, you succeed at them. You know, don't, don't, don't be under, uh, under pressure. I remember, <laughs> I remember in my time, you know, um, everyone wanted to drive a Benz after we had finished the school. A, a, a Benz, a Benz, a Benz. My dear, I got that Benz. It drained the little salary I was earning. We got tired of the Benz and sold it. Eh? You cannot compete with everybody, you know. Some Benz, mm -hmm. some, some, when I went to Cambridge to do my masters, my lecturers were riding bicycles, and yet they were earning more than the the richest lawyer in Uganda. But they are riding bicycles. I also started riding a bicycle. I realized that ah, this life, eh? ah, why am I stressing myself? Eh? We sold the Benz. We bought even a better car that that was able to accommodate the needs we wanted, even our bad roads and so on. So those anxieties, you must marry at a certain age, you must do what? No, 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 no. don't be under pressure. Yeah. One of my past presidents at, uh, at, at the Rotary Club of Kampala North got married recently, and the Lord has even blessed her with the twins. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Daniel, thank you for the verdict and vivid submission. My question is, in your private practice, how do you successfully deal with, say, enforcement, specifically against a non-compliant system such as the government? Blessings. Yeah, this is a, a big discussion. Uh, I'll leave this for President Owundo to answer because private practice is his thing every day. The truth is it is not easy. But build social networks. Build social networks. When you go to meet some of these people in government, be their friends, not their enemy. Don't pull rank, like we say, over them. But sometimes it is good for you to have... Uh, people who can help you along life's way, people who can advise you, people who can speak on your behalf. Even advocates need advocates in certain spaces, you know. Um, so what attitude do you go with? You know, go to this government employee, negotiate and say, look, I really need your help. Make your case. Sometimes you have to be persistent. The Bible, I remember, talks about, Jesus talks about the story of a widow who kept on asking the judge for justice. Until the judge said, oh, why are you here you go? You know? That's why you need to hang out lawyers and they share with you some ideas. But be careful which lawyers you hang out with. You know, so some of them may not be exactly give you the advice you need and may end up in problems. Yeah. So hang out first of all with your alumni at uh, UCU. What would you advise a student to prepare for a transition from university to LDC or LD or university to the world out there? Honestly read my book it will help at least it will be the first starting point because this book also gives you ideas of what other books you can read and then talk to mentors look for mentors to help you hello i wanted to find out how one remains consistent in the way they do things because most of us lose inspiration after a few weeks you need a mentor you need a mentor you need a discussion group um, you need to to be alive to the fact that you don't have it all as an individual and that you need support. You need to ask questions. I used to ask a lot of questions in class and I still do. Keep asking questions. 
keep asking questions. Thank you, Rotarian Daniel. Very structured question that will guide people on decision making. The issue of law students fearing to go to LDC has been a challenge. Many are misguided, Olive. Thank you very much, Rotarian Olive. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and try to answer these questions as much as possible. I know my time is well spent. May the Lord bless you. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you for creating time off to come and be with us. We do not take it for granted. And uh, I believe all of us have benefited off this discussion. Um, we, we are going to allow me invite President Bernard to come and speak to us. And then uh, after him, we are going to welcome the speaker for Kampala campus to give his closing remarks for this session. President Bernard, sorry, sorry, sorry Alan, you're welcome, you, sir. Alan, no, 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 no. Let me guide. Sorry, let the speaker speak first, and then the president will close. That's protocol. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor, for the guidance. Uh, let's welcome uh, Iman from uh, Kampala campus. Then. After that, we will come, President Bernard, to close for us. Iman, you're welcome. Um, thank you so much, Alan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Asmahani Fob Iman. I've actually noticed everyone that has been trying to address me has been using the he and what, but I'm a girl. Though the name is sounding like that of boys. I'm the speaker of Kampala campus and an LLB3 student at UCU. Um, I've been invited to give the final remarks on behalf of the president, Mr. Odong Dobini, who has been caught up with some stuff. And I would like to begin by thanking Alan, the moderator, for the wonderful job done. Thank you so much. And then I would like to also thank Dr. Rueza, for that insightful discussion that we've had. This has been a very good discussion. Personally, um, I'm a person who is good with physical discussions, but I've been able to attend this meeting from the beginning to the end, and I've enjoyed every bit of it, and I've learned a lot from you, Doctor. And I would also like to thank Council Bernard Oundo, and is it Citadel or Citadel Advocate, the pronunciation? for the help that you've given us in the preparation for the eminent speaker series. We thank you so much for your efforts. And I would also like to thank our lecturer, Madame Bako Patricia, who is a great mentor and is very passionate about reaching out to her students. And I would also th like to thank the colleagues and friends from other universities. Uh, this session has not been attended to by only UCU students. We have people from Macquarie University Law School, KIU, IUIU, and Gulu, and other universities. Thank you for sparing your time to join this discussion so that we can learn from the people that have been invited. And I would also like to thank the cabinet for the UCU Law Society. We have always, during this COVID period, we decided to merge our activities as Kampala Campus and Mukono. So I would like to thank both the cabinets, Mukono and Kampala, for coming together and organizing such a beautiful thing where people have been given the knowledge that we really all deserve to have had. We need to know things that we're not taught in law school. I think that's a very good book and I would like to purchase one. And we are very thankful, Doctor, for sparing this time, which maybe you would have spent with the family or doing something else. Council Bernard, Madame Patricia and everyone, thank you for being part of the conversation. We are very happy to have you with us and we are going to keep on having more ABNET speaker series. And I would like to conclude by inviting Mr. Grace Waswa, the president of Mackay University Law School to give the remarks. And I think then we shall have the concluding remarks from Mr. Bernard Owundo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm Iman. I'm very grateful for the invitation that I was given by the by uh, Comrade President uh, Liz Tumwebaza to attend this um, very insightful talk by Dr. Rojueza. The eminent speaker series is being very, very uh, productive for all of us uh, in this lockdown. 
I attended the first and now I'm attending this one and it's a very, very great venture by the UCU Law Society. Um, thank you very much. And I am very grateful to have attended. I hope that everyone picked out the big lessons that there was. Uh, doctor, my biggest lesson for this um, talk is to understand who I am and knowing that I'm not in a race with anyone um, competing with myself. And so that gives you a particular satisfaction in, at your heart and you run your race knowing that there is always a uh, big that is gonna happen in your life and that when life has thrown to you a lemon, you make a lemonade out of it. So thank you so much. I'm not gonna make this long. Thank you so much, Mr. Waswa Grace. Uh, thank you so much, Waswa, and thank you so much, Iman. Um, I am going to add on the voice to welcome President Bernard Owundo to come and speak to us uh, as he actually gives us a concluding remarks for the eminent speakership series that we actually had today. President Bernard, I'm more than honored to welcome you to come and speak. Um, Mr. Moderator, I think Mr. President Bernard Owundo le left the call. I don't know if he came back, but he left it a few minutes ago. So maybe if I would guide, I would maybe invite um, Dr. Ruhueza to just give the concluding prayer to pray for us, bless us along this journey of law school and even after. Yeah, those are my thoughts. All right, uh, it's a pity that uh, Bernard is not here. I would have loved to hear his thoughts. I don't know if Patricia Bako is around. Is she? Yes, yes, yes. Patricia is here. Uh, can I ask Patricia to, to do so? Okay, if I can indulge you, there are two people I see here who I'm going to ask to say something. I see Patricia Bako and also her worship Marianne Ninsima just to say one or two words of encouragement. And, and either of them can pray a blessing depending on who chooses to speak first. Let's start with Patricia, then her worship uh, Marianne can uh, conclude for us. I, I know I haven't asked them before, but uh, please indulge us. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. It's been an honor for me to be part of this discussion. And as you know, very, I'm very passionate about students and all that. And the things you're telling the students are things that uh, perhaps many of us wish we had got them while we're at school, but it's not too late for us to still learn. But one thing that I want to emphasize that, uh, that Doctor, Doctor mentioned is that find purpose, find purpose. I don't know how I can re-emphasize that. Find purpose. Uh, don't be dragged by the crowd because sometimes when the standards are for others, then sort of like you don't know what, you don't know yourself. So find purpose, know who you are. In terms of the, the, the what is happening right now, the lockdown, many of you are asking yourselves, what do you do with your time and all that? Please plan your time. You know, when you don't plan your time, someone else will help you plan your time. They will... They they will somehow divert you. You'll get a phone call and talk for hours at night and all that. Make use of your time during this period. For those who are passionate on reading a book, read a book. Those who are passionate on writing something, write something. For people who have been following me, you've seen I've started a bit of writing. Write something, make use of yourself, uh, develop yourself. And then to emphasize the aspect of mentors, guys, find a mentor find a mentor and when you identify that mentor follow up on your mentor don't leave it to your mentor to look for you because my experience with students a student would come and express interest to be mentored by you but then they leave you to do the chasing please chase your mentor look out for your mentor 
ask your mentor, ask for guidance where you need. Don't wait for your mentor to look for you because I personally, if you come for me to mentor you and you expect me to look for you, I will not look for you. It's your role as a student to look out, for, to look for your mentor, identify what you need to know from your mentor, make use of your mentor basically so that you can grow, learn something new from that person and everything. So, but I wish you all the best guys, take heart. Yeah, the, the situation is a bit tense, but we know we shall overcome because the God, God is with us in the boat and we are not going to sink. God bless you so much. Thank you very much, Patricia. Your worship, a few words, please, then you can bless us and we go. Um... Wow. Sorry, I was a bit unprepared. But um, most of the things have been said. I can only say, in order for one to remain consistent, like you already said, they, they have to be, they have to know who they are. Because when you know your values, it's easier to remain consistent to something that is you or is part of you. You'll know that I have integrity and then you're committed to that cause. So yeah, know your values because that will help you to be. Looks like how I should sniff. Yes. My 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 call was interrupted. Okay. So I, I I stated that it's important to know your values, to know who you really are, because that will help you in being consistent. If you know, for example, that you are a person of integrity. You can't be compromised even when you're at work and things are challenging. You will stick to your values. It will help you to stay consistent because you know, you know your value, you know what your belief is. So it will help you to be consistent and committed to the cause. And then, um, yeah, like they talked about mentors, you need to find someone that you believe is who you are or who you are, I don't know how to say this, but who you either want to be, because it's not a matter of finding mentors. You can't just go looking for people who you just look at and you're like, oh, that person is a successful lawyer. Let me go to them to mentor me. No, you need to know who they are and are those the kind of persons you want to develop into. If you think, yeah, this is this is someone that I would want to have influence on me, then yeah, go ahead, run after them and pursue them and yeah, they'll, they'll affect your life. So you need to know who you are. That's like the biggest, the biggest, the biggest thing. And then, um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm really struggling with my breath as, as doing some exercises, but yeah, so do some exercises as well in this time, try to write. Um, you can draw if you can, or sketch. Try to be positive, like really be positive. A lot happens, like they said, change, change is what remains constant. So find things that will excite you. Make a schedule, like really, really make a schedule. Sometimes you think you have less time, but you just need to be organized. I keep telling people, stop complaining. We all have 24 hours, but why is it that some people do certain things more than others or better than others? It's because they are organized. So find a schedule, find out which, which time is easier for you to work with. Is it in the night? Is it during the day? Is it in the mornings? And then do, do what you feel is constructive in those hours that you feel you're so concentrated. But yeah, make a schedule plan when you're going to cook, when you're going to play, when you're going to chill, you know, plan, plan out your schedule and yeah, all, all, all will be well. I believe all will be well and don't stress and also pray to God. <laughs> yeah, pray to God. That's all I can say.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Almighty God, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had to interact with these amazing students, practitioners, uh, lecturers, and whoever is on the call. We pray, God, that the things we've talked about, they'll continue meditating upon them and that they will be able, Lord, to soar above this VUCA storm, to know that this is temporary and that they are already winners. Help them, Lord, as they meditate, as they start working on their plans, their purpose, their vision, their mission, and as they research on all this. Bless them, Lord. Bless us all. Thank you for Zoom technology and the ability to interact. Thank you for the organizers. May you bless them in Jesus' name. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, be with all of us and remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. We are most grateful. Thank you so much, Doctor, for the prayer and for the session. And great thanks to everyone who attended. Welcome, welcome.